Hi everyone and welcome back to our survival series. In the last episode we worked on our weapon, or tools rather, and got them dealing damage. In this episode we're going to go through creation of a damage type class and setting up the different tool types so that we can deal different damage based upon which tool we're using. So let's get started. So typically in a survival game uh, you have different tools that work on different nodes at different efficiencies and that is what we're going to try and replicate. So for this first of all I need to set up an enum to determine the material type that I'm hitting based upon what tool we're hitting as well. So let's go ahead and open our content drawer here and we're going to right click and let's go to tools so I'm right clicking here and in blueprints we're going to go enumeration and we'll do e tool type and open this up we're going to add some enums in here so the first one you want to make is none so the default nothing will be different it'll be just set to none then we're going to have a axe and then we're going to have a pickaxe But then you can go into further things like having a hoe, for example, or a scythe, or something like that. Do whatever you like. So let's put another one in here for a uh, scythe, or like cutting down uh, foliage, uh, and so on and so forth. We hit save and close that. We can also add more to this later on if we need to. So each tool needs to have the type associated to it. So we can go to tool, and we're going to have a variable for tool type. And I'm going to change that to our e tool type. Follow that. And that is it for there. Then we have to go to our node, which we made last time as a parent sort of node. We're going to go to the variables and we're going to have how this node is going to respond to different tool types. So we're going to have a damage table for this particular actor. So in damage table here, we want this to be the tool type e tool type and we're going to make that a map and you set it to map and then change the value here from integer to float and the float can act like a multiplier so it'll either make the number the base damage here higher or lower based upon what kind of tool we're using so when i compile that i can now set up on here the different nodes types we have let's add one here for a scythe pickaxe axe and none now if you don't want to change the value at all you set to one so i'm going to start with this as a one 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 so by default nothing gets changed about the damage then on the node I'm going to just compile that now and on the node when we're taking any damage here i'm going to take the tool type from our damage now the way we can do that is using the damage type class to send that across so over here we're going to go to the content drawer Go to tools and we're going to go into create a new blueprint class and we're going to search for damage type and we'll do damage type underscore tool and in this when this can be like the parent tool type uh it's just going to have the variable for the tool type it is so we go e tool type that be the type for the tool. Compile that. And you can see over here you can set that on the class defaults and in here too. We're going to leave it as none because this is the parent one. We're not really worried about this. Um, we're going to save that. Now the way to interact with this a lot easier and to get the various uh, tool type value from it. Uh, we want to create a function that can easily get hold of that stuff. And in particular we're going to use an interface function. Now we've got the interface set up already for interaction, so we can keep using this one if you like. If you want to split it off into different ones, you're more than welcome to, but here will be just fine as well. So I'm going to go to add function and we we'll do get tool type. And it's going to have an output. So go to outputs and this will be tool type and e tool type. File save. Now, if I go back to that damage type tool, go to the class settings, I can now add the interface to here as well. So I'm going to add the interact interface to this and compile that. 
and we can see now we've got our various things here. We're just going to double click on tool type and now create the function. And the tool type is just this variable plugged into it. Compile and save. So now to make the other damage types for the various items we have. So if we go to our content drawer and in here, I'm going to create a child of my damage type tool. And this is going to be damage type pickaxe. I'm going to open it up. And all I have to do on here is just go to the right hand side and change the tool type here to pickaxe. That is it. I'm going to do the same again. Another one for axe. And open it up and set the tool type there to axe. And we'll do the last one for scythe as well. And open it up. And set the tool type to scythe. File and save. Now we're going to go back to our tool. Now, when we're applying damage here, we have a chance to insert the damage type class. Now, the damage type class here will be different based upon what tool we're currently using. So, what we can actually do is just promote that to a variable, leave it a damage type class, hit compile, and save that. I can then go to my tool pickaxe go to its class defaults and on the right hand side I can change the tool type here if I want to uh, axe or pickaxe rather and the damage type, cl type class here is a damage type pickaxe. Now the tool type is going to be used for something else later on but the damage type class is what we'll be using mostly to get the information for the damage number. So you do that for each item you have, each uh, tool you have. So our tool pickaxe is the one we're looking at right now and I'll go over to the node again. Now the node has a damage type coming out as an object reference, meaning that it's created that damage type class out into the world and we can now access it. And what I'm going to do from there is drag out and we're going to do get, dam uh, get tool type. And that's going to output a tool type. So all I have to do now is compare that tool type to my damage table. So let's drag that out and find the value related to that. And now we've got this multiplier. I'm going to take the damage from the any damage and multiply this by our find uh, found value here. And that'll be our new damage value. So we're going to have a health system on here later on, but we won't do it just yet. So for now, we'll just do a print string to print out that value there. File, save. So now, if I go to this node and I want to change this node to say on the damage here, the pickaxe is going to do twice as much damage. I'll save that. I'm going to go over to our tool pickaxe. Our defaults. Make sure they're set up correctly. The base damage is 50. So our expected number is going to be 100. So let's quickly double check that our player character hasn't reset any of those values back. So you can see they're all okay there. If we go into here and push play. And you see I'm now getting 100 value out of it now instead. If I hit anything else, it's going to say 50. Okay. So exactly what we want. Now to actually deal damage to something like this, we need to have a health value. Now lots of things in our world are going to have health values. So what we're going to do is create a component which stores our health values on them. So let's go ahead and put that together. And I'm just going to put it, we'll just put it in the root for now. And we'll go to blueprint class, actor component. And we'll call this one status or stat. We'll do it stat actually, stat component. And in the stat component, we're going to add our variable for health. Make that a float. We also want to have the maximum health we have. So variables, again, max health. And I'm going to set a default of these to be max health of uh, 200. And health here, we're going to change to uh, 200 as well. Actually, I'm making both 500. File and save that. Now, whilst we're in here, we're going to set up some things to apply damage to our character here. So I'm going to go to functions and make a new function that affects our health value. 
So here we're going to do is um, uh, affect health. And our effect health here is going to take one input, which will be the value we want to affect it by. So value, that could be either increasing it or decreasing it. It doesn't really matter. On effect health here, we're going to take the health value from our variables and add that onto our value. And then set it back to our value. But before we do that setback, in between here, we want to clamp it to the max health. So that way, if we are healing, we don't want the max health to be exceeded. So take out your max health. And then from the plus, there you go here, the addition, drag out from there and clamp the float. With the max health being the max value and the return value going into the health value there. Okay. Now it could be quite useful to output the new health as well, just in case. So let's add a little return node to this thing. And that return node, we're going to drag in that health value into there. Right, I'll save that. So let's go to my node here and go to the node and we go to its components and we're going to add in here the stat component. So when I take damage, rather than printing string, I'm going to drag out my stat component and do affect health. Plug that in. Um. So now our stat has 200 health and it's going to lose health as we go. Now if we run out of health we want this thing to uh, basically disappear and die. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our stat component again. And we're going to do a check to see if health is valid or not. So in here we're going to make a new function and do is alive. And it is alive, we're going to take the health value and we're going to take that and we're going to check to see if it's greater than zero. And if it is greater than zero, then we are alive and we just return node out just fine. And you may want to also put a boolean on that saying yes, we're alive. It's alive. Uh, but on the false, we're going to tell it to disappear. So on the false, we're going to drag this out and we're going to do destroy actor on the owner. So first of all, we have to get owner. And from there, we're going to do destroy actor. And we get an owner because this is a component and the component isn't an actor itself. It belongs to other actors. So we're going to destroy the actor that it belongs to and then we'll do a return node out. Plug that in. And this top one here will be true. Okay, we compile and save that. Go back to effect health, and we're going to plug is alive into the end here before turn value. File save. So now, if I were to keep hitting my node, it should be affecting its health and it should disappear soon. Or not. Let's take a look at that and let's output this new health value. A print string e health value yeah. I'll save let's take a look what's going wrong there so 500 500 500 so okay so it's going back to 500 did I not set it back uh, value into their health plus uh, oh sorry effect health needs to take this away not plus silly me minus There we go. So obviously we're taking damage. If we heal, we've put in a negative value to heal. So there you go. 400, 300, 200, 100, and gone. There we go. And there we go, Ron. We've now got our tool dealing a different amount of damage based upon what tool we're using on the particular nodes. Speaking of nodes, in the next episode, we're going to go through the creation process of making different nodes that react differently based upon those tools. We're going to go through set up their meshes and how they spawn and regenerate in the world as well. If you want to watch the next episode right now, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where you can find all my videos early before everyone else from just $1 a month. Massive thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. Once again, thank you for watching. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.